<laughs> Welcome back to KCDC. Some life lessons from John Kennedy there. Joining me this hour, President and CEO of Voto Latino and MSNBC contributor Maria Teresa Kumar, White House reporter for the Associated Press and MSNBC political analyst Jonathan Lemire, and Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today, Susan Page. Thank you all for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. I, I want to start off by talking about the sheer number of negative headlines surrounding EPA Chief Scott Pruitt. It has been something to behold. We have seen reports on everything from lavish first-class travel to a $43,000 soundproof phone booth, a bulletproof desk, questionable pay raises for staffers. And then there are details like this one from the New York Times. Quote, Mr. Pruitt, who often ran late, wanted to use the lights and sirens in his motorcade to expedite local trips in Washington to the airport or to dinner, including at least one trip to Le Diplomat, a trendy French restaurant that he frequented. And just this weekend, the Associated Press reported that Pruitt's round-the-clock security detail has cost taxpayers nearly $3 million in total. Here is how Pruitt defended himself against just one of these stories in an interview this week with Ed Henry of Fox News. President Trump said he would drain the swamp. I don't. Look, is I, draining the swamp renting an apartment from the wife of a Washington lobbyist? I don't think that that's even remotely fair to ask that question. Okay, so uh, why did you then accept uh, $50 a night uh, to rent a condo from the wife of a Washington lobbyist? Well, let's talk about that. That is something that, again, has been reviewed by ethics officials here. They've said that it's market rate. You only so paid for the nights you rent you were there. That's exactly right. So, but that's, that's kind of a sweetheart deal because no, like your house in Oklahoma, you pay a mortgage on that. And when you don't sleep well, there, yeah, 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 when yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. sleep there, you still pay the mortgage, right? Not when I'm at use. I mean, yes. But this is, yes, a, this is a tremendous difference. I, I wasn't using the facility. Go, Ed, go. This morning, the president posted on Twitter, quote, while security spending was somewhat more than his predecessor, Scott Pruitt has received death threats because of his bold actions at EPA. Record clean air and water while saving USA billions of dollars. Rent was about market rate. Travel expenses, okay. Scott is doing a great job. Jonathan Lemire, is Scott Pruitt part of the swamp? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> uh, first of all, let's just point out that there's been no evidence produced there's been any death threats. Uh, that that, that, he, that the EPA has not been able to respond to requests saying that has happened. Uh, Scott Pruitt certainly has a tenuous hold on his job, but he is, at least now, in there, and despite Chief of Staff John Kelly's urging to have the president dispose of him, the president is inclined to let him hang around, at least for a little while. We saw from that tweet that he's at least seemed to be digging in his heels for the time being. And one thing that Pruitt has that perhaps, say, let's say David Shulkin did not have is a lot of help from the outside. Though Pruitt's lost right. a lot of West Wing advisors, there's very, very little support in the building anymore. There is a team of, of industry leaders and Republicans, a number on the Hill, who have said to, to the president said, look, he's getting stuff done. He's advancing your conservative agenda at the EPA. You know, he should be able to remain in his post. The president himself is personally fond of him, thinks he is doing good work with the regulations. But but if, if there is another avalanche of bad headlines, one wonders if he can survive. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> I can, yes. Understatement. Susan Page, one aspect of this that uh, Jonathan Lemire didn't touch on seems to be also that Scott Pruitt has become something of an unlikely hero for the right, for people like Rush Limbaugh, who have defended him. Yeah, that's true. I would just like to say that who among us would not like to run lights and sirens when we're running late oh, man. to a restaurant <laughs> reservation? <laughs> and I do a, love the Le Diplomat. Yeah, yeah, it's, hey. it's a great restaurant. They'll give away your table. They They'll give away your table. But I think it is, it, he has become a hero to the right. I, we, I think all of us get a lot of emails from conservative activists and organizations defending him. I think the president's decision to defend him today is, is remarkable because in any administration, he would have been out the door by now. Even in this administration, he'd be out the door by now. How is his how is his offenses less uh, bad than than what pushed Tillerson out? Or I mean, it, you know, very, very, Gary Cohn and other people who have left voluntarily or not so voluntarily. Um, but, but I think that must be why the two things that Jonathan mentioned: one that that Trump likes him, which holds him in good stead, I mean, and that conservatives that are defending him. Yeah, but I think it's 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 actually exploring why does Trump like him, and the reason that Trump likes him, and it was. And Rachel did. A, Rachel Maddow did a really beautiful piece earlier this week, and it was the connection that he has, Pruitt has, to Icon, the shareholder activist. So basically, right, Carl Icon. Carl Icon. Yeah. yeah. So right after the president interviewed 
Pruitt. He said, go march up two blocks and go talk to Icon. Icon, unfortunately, is the same lobby, actually talks to the exact same lobbyist as the person that he, surprisingly, was renting a place from. <laughs> so it all, all of a sudden, it all starts coming together. And you're like, oh, why does the president like him? Oh, it could be because one of his supporters, who basically has been really close to the president, explaining to him not only Washington, but also has his, his hand in the cookie jar, saying, you know, keep Pruitt alone because he's actually doing the, the service that we would like him to do. Mm -hmm. Joining me now to talk more about this is former EPA administrator Gina McCarthy. She is now a professor of public health at Harvard University and director of the Center for Health and the Global Environment. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, uh, professor, former administrator. I pick, pick your appropriate title. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Casey. It's good to be here. First of all, how much money did you spend on security in your first year? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? <laughs> No, actually, I don't. But I know I had many fewer security people with me. I knew I flew coach. And I know that he's comparing what I spent in four or eight years with what he's already spent in one. Had, did you ever do what he's accused of in, in turning on lights and sirens to try and go around a, a traffic jam in, in the instance of a personal issue? Look, let, let me just make something very clear. In the Obama administration, it wasn't just the work you did, but how you did it. It was all about the dignity of the office, being a public servant, guarding the public trust. I never did anything that would, would uh, cause people to have concern that I wasn't acting with the dignity of the office. I want to show you a little bit more of the interview that Pruitt did with uh, Ed Henry of Fox News where uh, your name was mentioned. Take a look. In terms of draining the swamp, do you think if an Obama cabinet official rented an apartment here in Washington Hottest. from the wife of a Washington lobbyist, you don't think Donald Trump and You know and what Scott I think Pruitt about it? You know, you know what I think about it, Ed? You know what I think about it, Ed? They weren't even looking at those issues back then. Well, there, are members, there are members of Congress that have for years rented rooms on Capitol Hill, right. just the, the, the C so Street area. So it's a swamp. You no, said no, it's no, a swamp, no, Donald Trump. No, but you're not changing no, it. Here's the, you're doing the Ed, same thing they did, you're saying. Ed, If they the did it, it's okay for you. No, I didn't say that. I'm you not just saying that said at all. Congressmen you, have been doing it. You said if the Obama people did it, the media wouldn't cover it. So if it happened before, why aren't you changing? So, Ed, here's the, here's the point I'm trying to make. You asked me whether there'd been criticism, would have been criticism with respect to previous cabinet officials and Obama. The fact of the matter is nobody's even asking the questions back then. Here's why they weren't, because they weren't getting things done like this administration. That's why those questions are being asked. So I will put this question to you, former Obama administration official. They were talking specifically about his living arrangements. What were your uh, arrangements when you lived uh, in the Capitol? And did you have uh, a deal with a lobbyist or, or similarly that you took advantage of? I, I rented an apartment and paid for it with my own money. Um, it was certainly not glamorous, but look, I, I was there to, to do a job. And I think we don't just have to look at whether Scott Pruitt is becoming the swamp he was really supposed to be draining, but also look at his lack of transparency within the agency. He's hiding in his own office. And he's separating himself from the employees so he doesn't learn anything. He's not following the science. He's attacking it. He's not following the law. So I know that the president is interested in keeping him doing his job because he's being so effective. But in truth, he isn't being affected. When he's been challenged in court because of taking shortcuts in the law and the process, that, that he has had his actions turned back by the courts and found to be illegal. So so he's making a lot of headlines, making a lot of announcements about rollbacks. But in effect, every law that was in effect in 2016 when we left office is still on the books today. So the president may be impressed with his announcements just like he gets impressed with his own. But that doesn't mean that things are getting rolled back. But what it does mean is you have an administrator who isn't focused on the mission of the agency, who's solely looking at at it costs to industry rather than public health and lives saved. That's what we need in this country is folks who understand they're public servants. They have a job to do for the public, not for their own benefit and gratification. You referenced, uh, and I, there was a story this morning in the New York Times about the possibility that many of these regulations that, as, as you point out, he yeah. is trying to overturn, he may be doing in such a way that opens himself up uh, to legal challenges. Do you think 
then that he is not doing real damage in your view to environmental uh, policy? Well, the damage is that things are not getting done. You know, this is the first administration that I know of whose sole vision for the future is to turn everything back that the prior administration did. So I don't want to say that there shouldn't be federal leadership. We need it at this time. We have real challenges to public health. We have real challenges to our own public health and safety with the challenge of climate change. It's embarrassing to look at how the international world is looking at us. It's embarrassing that we're ceding economic vitality and jobs that relate to clean energy to China. Why aren't we wanting to lead the world both economically and in terms of protecting our, our families? You know, they just announced a car rule that they're beginning to relook at. They're already putting a check mark next to getting rid of that rule. But that rule wasn't just about costing business money. It was actually providing a, a, a certainty years in the future about what kind of cars should be produced that will not just reduce greenhouse gases that are fueling climate change, but actually save families money, up to $8,000 over the life of a vehicle. So we did our jobs well. And, and this administration, in trying to get rid of what we did, will have to do their job well. They'll have to do the science, they'll have to base it on fact, they'll have to reach out to the public, and they'll have to talk not just about savings to industry, yeah. but what the cost of those rules are to public health if we don't move forward. Gina McCarthy, thank you very much for your time tonight. I really appreciate it. Great to be here. Thanks. Let's talk a little bit about about this in, in, in a slightly broader context. The president has said that he's close to having the cabinet that he wants, but not quite. It seems clear, based on this slew of negative headlines, that Scott Pruitt is somebody he wants in his cabinet. And I think we have actually seen the effect of the changes in the cabinet and the White House staff with the president in recent months. I think he is more comfortable uh, with the powers of the presidency. He is less patient with those who say, you don't really understand, you need to take it slow, don't say that, you need to peel it back. Uh, he is, he is, and that's why we see him, for instance, making the statements he did on Syria, which now now he is having to walk back in the face of these terrible chemical right. he, He's bringing in people, a number of them from Fox News, but he's bringing in people who are supportive largely of his agenda. As you said, he definitely has less patience for being managed or handled, which is also why the, the chief of staff is still his chief of staff. I think there's a there's sense in the West Wing that John Kelly's days are numbered, that the president is, is sort of tired of Kelly trying to box him in, trying, tired of trying to control him and restrict his access to his advisors after hours or people coming in through the Oval office and that he started cutting the chief of staff out of a number of key decisions. And who did he talk about have, wanting to replace Kelly with as chief of staff? Scott Pruitt, which would just <laughs> well, be also for attorney general, right? So I think that oh, attorney, attorney general, general that's the attorney, right. attorney general. Although for Scott I will Pruitt. say there's a but belief think, that Pruitt himself and his team was sort of is believed to be the source of a lot of those rumors. <laughs> but, but, I think, the way but I think the challenge right now, and I think that you, you, you nailed it, the challenge right now is that the people he's surrounding with, not, with him is not, they're not only yes people, but they also know how to spin the media. So these are there are people he sees on television. On television, yes. exactly. So yeah. they know that he knows that he can go ahead and trout them on. They, he already knows what they're going to say, and he also knows how to spin the rest of the American public to his position. And that is really, I think, that should be a concern to many folks because they're not going to be able to actually basically say, "Oh my gosh, is he really telling the truth?" No, they've already they already know the talking points and they've internalized them to a place that's going to be really difficult for us to actually identify the real nuance with his policies. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.